Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to work a, an F-test uh, for population variances uh, in JUMP. So remember the F-test is typically used prior to doing a two-sample T-test for the difference of two population means. Because you need to make a decision, am I going to do Welch's t-test, uh, assuming that the population variances are unequal, or am I going to do the pooled version of the two-sample t-test, assuming equal variances? So um, in the notes for this section, if I go all the way to the end of the notes, there's an example, and I've you know worked the example. So there's the example, medical researcher, and I've worked the example on the template, and this test was a fail-to-reject scenario. Let's give a look here, and then what I'll do is I'll show you, uh, point out a few things about the template, and then I'll show you how to work this in JUMP, which is extremely easy. All right, so a medical researcher decides to perform an experiment comparing the effects of a, uh, uh, excuse me, calcium and a placebo on the blood pressure of males. The researcher wants to use a two-sample t-test where a pooled standard deviation is calculated. Since the re procedure requires equal population variances, an F-test is called upon to determine if the population standard deviations are equal. All right, so naturally, um, you know, this experimenter is going to do a two-sample t-test, but he's trying to make the decision, hey, should I pull or should I not pull? Use Welch's t-test when I don't pull, or can I assume equal variances? All right, so he has his data, two samples, larger uh, sample variance from 10 pieces of data, smaller sample variance from 11 pieces of data. Do these results support the use of the two-sample t-test with a pooled standard deviation? Use 5% alpha. All right, so remember, the hypotheses never change. The null is that the variances are equal, and the alternative population variance is not equal. All right, so here's the summarized statistics given in the question. Sample variances, remember the numerator always contains the larger population variance, so that when you take your F ratio, you're always getting values greater than 1 there. Uh, sample sizes and their appropriate degrees of freedom. Alpha was 5%. Alpha divided by 2, 0.025. Remember, we divide by 2 because we always perform a right-tailed test with the F-test. Critical value comes from the table. Uh, I'll show you how to grab that and jump. Jump will do that for me. Here's my testing statistic, nice and easy. Probably the easiest testing statistic that we've calculated in the course. You take the uh, two population variances and divide them. Now, technically, you can divide them in either direction. Uh, jump will allow for that, actually. Um, where, remember, the, the way I taught the test is that we're always going to put the larger variance on top. This way, this F ratio is always greater than 1. We're expecting the F ratio to hover near 1. The further the ratio is from 1, in other words, the, di the, the, the larger the difference is between these two variances, the more likely it is for us to land in the critical region, therefore rejecting the null hypothesis. Um, all right, so this test, um, pretty easy. I looked up the F um, critical value in the table, 3.78. This ratio was 1.37 approximately. Clearly, it doesn't land in a critical region, so this is a fail-to-reject scenario. So we fail to reject that the population variances are equal, so therefore we, you know, this guy could go ahead and assume he could use the two-sample t-test for equal population variances. All right, now how do you do this in JUMP? Well, in JUMP, this is really easy. So if I go to JUMP, and go to our add-ins menu. In the statistical calculators at the bottom, there's the confidence interval and the hypothesis test for two variances. So I'm going to look at the hypothesis test. First thing it asks you, what are you giving me? All right, um, we're going to give um, summary statistics to the to jump. All right, so let's pop up this menu. And you know, I think it's um, you know once you once you see the um, the menu, I think it's pretty clear on what you got to do here. So uh, first thing it asks you is about your uh, alternative hypotheses. Um, this is a greater than scenario. I'm sorry, we are, we are doing a, yeah, we were going to do a greater than scenario here. Um, and then the hypothesized ratio, 1. Okay, yep, we're going to leave that at 1. Now look at this. It, it's asking you for the variances in the summary statistics. What's kind of nice is if the question gives you standard deviation instead, you could click this button and it'll switch the inputs. All right, let's just give this what it needs. So it's pretty straightforward here. Um, <clears throat> look at the order of the ratio, by the way. Variance 2 divided by variance 1. So... The variance we put on top, remember, has to be the larger variance. So variance 2 will be the larger variance. So in this case, that's 8.45. So 8.45. 
and that sample size was 10. And then this is 6.14, and that sample size is 11. And then the alpha level is 5%. All right, so let's see the results. All right, the, um, the variance ratio, which is the F ratio, right? 1.376, that's this number right here, the testing statistic. The F critical value, uh, 3.20, um, maybe that's because they want us to do to divide the alpha in half. Yeah, that's what they probably want us to do there. Let me uh, fix that. Hold on. Point zero two five, and there you go. Three point seven seven nine. The um the significance level alpha is here, right? That's significance. That's that's point zero five. That's what I put in there in the first place. But remember, we're always going to do a right-tailed test, so that's why we divide the alpha by two. And you can see I did that over here. Now jump actually requires that you give it the alpha over two value there. And then you see the F critical value, 3.779, 3.78 that I got from the table. And as you can see, they match. And then naturally the observed significance level, um, uh, you know, p-value is 0.3119. All right, so obviously that's larger than any alpha we would ever use. So since the p-value is greater than alpha, we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. Alternatively, since the testing statistic does not land in the critical region, we'll fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right, so in other words, um, the population variances are in fact equal, and the medical researcher was correct in pooling the standard deviations um, to use our two-sample t-test. Um, really all the F tests are the same as this. So the only thing we got to remember in jump is that we don't, when it says significance level, um, that we be careful because technically the significance level for this question is 5%, but you can see jump requires the alpha over two value because I'm doing a one-tailed test here. Remember the idea behind a one-tailed test <clears throat> is it creates the ratios here that are greater than one and it allows us to always put the larger variance on top, smaller variance on bottom allowing us to always do a right-tailed test. It kind of simplifies the table. Nowadays with technology, we don't technically have to do that because you know we don't need this table. If you look at the table, I'm sure you've seen it, the table for this, for you know just caring about one tail, I believe is eight pages long, which is ridiculous. Um, could you imagine if we had to worry about two-tailed? You know, it'd be, it would be double. Uh, so it's a, you know, back in the day, this was an, a necessary thing, you know, always doing a right-tailed test. Nowadays, I don't think we have to take care of that. All right, so I hope this helps you out. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. Thanks for watching.